Good morning, everybody, and welcome to the Sparky Malarkey Show. TGIF, thank God it's Friday, edition, Frankie Catalanato, phone zone edition, Major League style. Got the profile here, it's going to be calling in in a couple minutes, trying to get him up. He's a king, he stays in bed, don't bother him. Don't even call him, he's got other people to call, we'll get to him. Get him back to you. Uh, okay, so the Twitter handle is at fcat27. Okay, so his name's Frank Catalanato. Graduated from Smithtown East High School, Smithtown, New York. Uh, he's born April 27, 1974. Wow, he's young. He's Derek Jeter's age. I thought Frankie was a lot older than me. He's not. I guess that makes sense. Okay, drafted by the Detroit Tigers in the 10th round of the 1992 Amateur Draft. Signed June 2nd, 1992 with the Detroit Tigers. He debuted in the major leagues five years later at age 23 on September 3rd, 1997. Teams? Oh, five games played. Rangers, Blue Jays, Tigers, Brewers, and Mets. Shout out to Alan Nero. His final game was May 10, 2010. Three years ago. 36 years old. Not even three years ago. Almost going on three years ago. Okay. You can view his player bio if you would like at Saber Bio Project. Uh, it is Frank Catalanato at FCAT. At FCAT27 on Twitter. Uh, get his book in stores now. Heart and Hustle. Hustle and Heart. Either way, it gets you to the big leagues. And uh, this guy's big time. We're going to get him up. He's going to call in. Um, like I said, I played hockey with him before I ever saw him play baseball. And then I was at Smithtown, I was at Gaynor Park when he hit two bombs off South Champions East Islip. Um, nation renowned squad, organization, South Champion. Sporky Milwaukee Show, we're coming right back with Frank Catalan out. Don't move. Frankie Cat. Hey, what's going on, brother? What's up, bro? How you doing? Dude, $6,000 for the phone. My biggest interview and the thing first freezes up. <laughs> <laughs> I swear to God. So, oh, oh, so, so all right. I got Frankie Catalanato on the line. Family man. Welcome to the Sporky Milwaukee Show. Cat, I'm looking up on your, bio, on your profile. You're only 38 years old. Yeah, I'm getting old, man. I'm going to be 39 soon. You know, I'm starting to feel it, too. Every time I uh, wake up and walk out of it and get out of bed, uh, the body just doesn't, doesn't feel the same. You know, it's funny. I've been doing this since 1998. That because the other day, first of all, this gentleman played 13 years in the big leagues, major league baseball player, 291 lifetime career average, uh, 89 home runs. Now, I'm like, I see you the other day at, at the at the gym and you're on the table stretching out your hammies. I'm like, poor guy, and you just said you're feeling old, but bro, I thought you were 40 years old. You're 38. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you know, I, 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 I
you know, I, I don't stretch out like that every single day. Otherwise, uh, you know, I'm going to feel like uh, uh, just concrete, you know. So I uh, I try to keep in shape, try to, try, try to work out uh, as much as I possibly can, and, and stretching, uh, stretching obviously helps me out. Right. Well, I was putting my meatball pizza in the oven, and I was I said to myself, he pro he's got to stretch out like that every day in order to be fit for his daughters and and his wife and do things. So, but uh, I was all then I said, you know what? This this friggin' sob is only 38 years old. I'm gonna next time I go to Miami, I'm gonna call General Manager David Sampson of the Miami Marlins. And I'm gonna tell him I got a guy, a uh, professional hitter, if he need, you know what I'm saying, to help those guys, veteran in the clubhouse. Thanks, man. Try to put a good word in for me. <laughs> I, but, know. Uh, I knew you, you were gonna uh, like that. I wish I wish I could still play. Uh, I don't know. That game, you know, Major League uh, Baseball moves at a uh, a fast pace, and I think it's uh, it's kind of passed me by. But I appreciate the uh, the compliment and. Uh, of course, if I could, if I can get a job with the Marlins, I would uh, I accept it. So we'll see what you can do. <laughs> All right, we're we're gonna talk about that. Talk about that now. I'm glad you touched on that. You said the game moves very fast. So for including myself, I never played in that league. For us guys at home who watch the slowest game in the world, everyone thinks they always forget that the game starts with a 90 plus mile an hour fastball at your head. And people that say, oh, it's not at your head. It's at your head when it leaves the guy's hand. Now, how did you, how the hell did you be able to slow the game down and keep yourself in the league for so long? Well, it wasn't easy. You know, I'll tell you, you know, from AAA to the big leagues, it is a big difference. And, and you know, you get to the big leagues, you know, you're not going to have the same speed up. But uh, I think you know, I learned from a coach, uh, a hitting coach, Rudy Jaramillo, and he told me breathing, you know, really helps you slow everything down. Kind of focusing on what you're doing, taking some deep breaths, and uh, not make, not allowing the situation to get too big. Uh, that that always seemed to help me. You know, I always had confidence in myself. And uh, when you're playing at that level, you have to have uh, a lot of self-confidence. Okay, well said. Now, I I have a. I have a lot of kids in Miami, as you know, that I teach at my baseball school, and uh, this my one special one, uh, the first one, Adam, I would go and stretch him out at the field. He would be, he's nine years old, and I would stretch him out, and his mother and his stepfather came down, or one of his uh, mentors came down, and I was telling him about getting the diaphragm in a correct position, like getting your breath right. And I was telling him like how Michael Jordan would talk about being in the zone, and I and the and his one of his mentors was standing there and said, um, he said I think it's all about the breath. I said you're 100 percent right. So it's amazing that you said that because, and it's not just baseball, folks. It's everything in life. If you can control your breathing, get a get a grip on yourself, and once you get uh, the correct breath and you're calm, now your eyes open wider, you're more relaxed, you're more confident, and really the sky's the limit, as Frankie just said, because the guy stepped up into a major league box. I was telling my fiance the other day, Frankie, about the line, I learned it from the NFL, like when you first score a touchdown, they say, act like you did it before. You know, everyone does it for the first time, and you have to pretend you know what you're doing, and, and, and then it turns into a 13-year career, and then you actually do know what you're doing one day. You're absolutely right, and, I, and I'm glad, uh, you know, I, it, seems, it seems like you really know what you're talking about, because it's true, I mean, you've got to, you, you can't let the situation get too big, but uh, breathing, you know, breathing in through your nose, out through your mouth, it, uh, it helped me out so much to calm me down in those, in those situations, and, uh, you know, I know that, uh, you know, watching the other major league players uh, be successful, uh, I, I saw most of them, uh, you know, they were able to control their breathing and, uh, and control the situation, and, you know, it's going to help you be successful. Yes, sir, and I'll tell you what I'm burning on. Did I cut you off? Or No, right?
But what I'm burning on today, last night I watched this dirtbag Artie Lang. I enjoyed the comedy and stuff, right? So he has his own show. And last night he was explaining how he was like a young punk and he went to Saturday. He was working on the Mad TV with David Spade. And Saturday Night Live, I, he was talking about the boss, the big shot, I forget his name, and Laurel or something. And he said he, he got an invite to go over there for an interview. So he told Spade. He said, listen, I need the day off. I got to go over there. And Spade looked at him and said, you sure he's not messing with you? And, and Audie laying in his head, he said, I was like, wow, maybe he is. You know, but why would he mess with me? I'm a nobody. He said, so he got to the office and there was a hot blonde secretary. And she, she, he sat there for an hour and 10 minutes. And in between, he said, uh... Martin Short's on the line for you, and Artie Lang's sitting here waiting. <laughs> and he said he would sweat. And then they, they did it again. Steve Martin's here uh, on the phone, but Artie Lang's here waiting. He said, finally, an hour, 15 minutes later, the guy brought him into the office, and he said, this, uh, this is your dream, isn't it? And Artie said, well, you know, to hear the Saturday Night Live guy announce your name, yeah, that is one of my dreams. And he said, it'll never happen. And Artie said, like, here's this guy, like, wanted me to admit that that's my dream and then shut me down. And then later on in life, he learned that in an interview, you're supposed to be smug like you are. You're not supposed to be, oh, yes, sir, no, sir. And that's kind of what you're talking about as well. Like, Deion Sanders got up to the plate. You think he wasn't nervous? He was. But he drew a dollar sign in the dirt to the point where Carlton Fisk or someone wanted to rip his head off. But... He's just being the character he is. And, oh, I'm glad that segued into Pete Seafone calling you a dud. You know what? The guys like you and Derek Jeter, listen, you're doing business. You're like Paul O'Neill. You're not there to play around. That's why me and Peter are joking around <laughs> over here. Go ahead. Well, you know, you have to believe in yourself. You have to have confidence. And, and you know, I... The guys that get there, the guys uh, that stay there, are the guys that uh, that believe in themselves. And I know in my in with myself, you know, I always wanted to be better than the, the, the guy ahead of me, and, and I worked hard, and I felt like, um, you know, that I was gonna. Once I got to the minor leagues, I felt like I was gonna be a major league player uh, if I, you know, kept working hard. And uh, you know, I. I like I said, you've got to believe in yourself, and, and, and all successful people uh, do believe in them, themselves. And now, I'm glad you touched on that, because now I can spare you with the corny tip of the day, uh, because you just gave it uh, in a roundabout way, in a subliminal way. You, the, the key and the tip that Mr. Frankie Catalanato is giving you people is, the number one step is to believe in yourself, people. If you believe in yourself, truly, not fakely, and talk about it, but if you believe in yourself, put in the hard work, dreams come true. Frankie, listen, um, all right, real quick, let's do uh, the first thing that comes to mind, and then I'll let you get off the phone, like Michael K. Um, all right, favorite movie? Goodfellas. Favorite rock band? Pearl Jam. Favorite rapper? Did you say rapper? Yes, sir. Eminem. I knew you were gonna say it. Still on. Good, good. All right. Uh, oh, hamburgers or lasagna? Quick. I lost you. What'd you say? Hamburgers or lasagna? Off the top of your head. Lasagna. <laughs> Mr. Catalanato, truck or coupe? Say it again. I can't hear you. No problem. Truck or coupe? Coupe, like a like a Corvette, or you want a truck? Yes, sir. All right, now, thank you. You're off the hot seat. That was great. I'm going to let you go in a minute. But before you do, I want to say hello to your family. Uh, listen, my father and your father played together, as you know, Smithtown Bulls at Browns Road, where my football career started. And, yeah. and I want to say your father had that, that porn star mustache, and he was, <laughs> he was like the best, or he's definitely the best looking guy on the team, that's for sure. But he was like a, a really good player, man. I want you to tell him I said that. I, I will tell him, and, and he, he'll, uh, he's going to love that because whenever anyone tells him that uh, he was a good hitter, he always tells me he was a better hitter than me. You know, our fathers, 
Bro, that's really funny you say that, because our fathers, they're such like arrogant pricks, like, you know? I, and I love it. That's why we are as great as we are. Shout out to yeah. our dads, Frankie and Phil. What's that? I said shout out to our dads, Frankie and Phil. Oh, absolutely. Shout yeah. out to them. You remember John Miller, Benji and Jake's Miller? Yeah, the yeah father? of course. Dude, that guy was a beast. A couple of years before my father started, maybe your father was there, John Miller, Benji Miller, who I used to catch, his father ripped a line drive at the, at the Smithtown Braves' first third baseman, and the guy couldn't get his glove up, and it mashed his face. No, that's terrible. <laughs> aluminum bats. Why don't you jump in an aluminum bat league? <laughs> oh, no chance. Oh, man. Hey, what are you going to do today? Today? Yep. I'm, I got, uh, you know, I just started flipping houses, so I'm going to, uh, I actually, I, I bought a house in Northport. I'm going to head down there, check out the work that's going on. Um, I've got uh, four girls at home, so once they get home, they've got a whole bunch of uh, activities, dance and gymnastics and uh, and basketball, so uh, I'll, I'll be getting busy soon. All right, good luck, and um, I, what was I going to say? I was going to say, I'm, I live in East Northport, so you're right here, and I haven't bought my first house yet, but it's coming this year. So don't big league me on the house flipping situation, and I got skills, so we're going to talk business, baby. I know you got skills, because I've, I've seen your skills down at Prospect Sports. You're one of the best instructors that I've seen. I love your passion, and uh, yes. I love the way you, uh, you deal with the kids. But as far as the houses are concerned, maybe I'll flip the house for you and get you in your first house here soon. Flip my house. Yo, dude, you are the best. I've always loved you. You've always inspired me. And I, I wrote down on my clipboard that you helped my dreams come true because when you made it, and it not just made it but stayed there, I had a sense of relief that a guy in our circle that worked damn hard made it, and, and I love it. Have a great day, well, man. God bless you and your family, Frankie. All right. Thanks, Mark. I'll see you soon. Bye-bye. Uh, all right, bro. I'll see you. Have a great day.